hello. I don't know how to start. Not filming a video for a while and then filming a video feels so weird. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're brand new, then what's up? I'm super glad that you're here. I am going to be talking about my birth experience today, my birth story. I haven't been making videos for a long time. It has been months, months and months and months since I filmed a YouTube video and that is because I've been really trying to stay present with my new baby and been really trying to just enjoy the moment and not be so focused on work. So I think I'm going to start making videos again. I feel really excited and I thought a good way to come back and start making videos again would be to talk about my experience with labor or giving birth or whatever you want to call it, pushing a baby out of my body. Um, yeah, because it was a pretty intense experience. I think intense is a good word to use. So we're just gonna have a little sit down chat. I have my phone with some notes and I'm just gonna kind of talk about the whole experience and how it was for me. If you're not into this video, if you don't want to hear about it, if it's TMI, don't watch it because I'm gonna talk about like the experience and like I'm gonna talk about all of it. So if it's too much, if you don't like hearing about this stuff, then literally just don't watch the video. But I love watching videos like this, so I really thought it could be a good way to document what happened. Also, I just want to be able to remember it because it's been almost six months since it happened. I've been wanting to film this video for a while because it's already just like slipping my mind. Like I'm starting to forget. So this is also for me to kind of have a way to look back and remember how it all went down. So let's just dive right on in. Let me have a sip of my Limoncello LaCroix, which I can't decide if I like or not yet. Like I like it, but then I don't like it. Anyway. Okay, so it all started when I was a week late. So I thought I was gonna be early for sure. Thought I was gonna be early. Thought I was gonna be like two weeks early. I thought I just had a feeling that I was gonna be early and I wasn't. <laughs> it was a week, it was exactly a week past my due date that things started kicking into gear. So up until like the day before, I didn't even feel like anything nothing at all. I felt the exact same that I had felt for like months. I just was like, okay, don't know when this is going to happen, but we'll just see when it happens. So I was a week past my due date and was just chilling. In the morning of, it was on a Saturday. So I was hoping this entire time, I was like, please just be like in the morning. I just want to go into labor in the morning. I don't want it to be at night so that I have to like stay up through the night and I'll be tired. And uh, I just wanted it to be morning so bad for some reason. It just sounded nice to be done and then come home and like sleep in the evening. So went to bed Friday night, didn't feel anything. And in the morning, I like something woke me up. I had a feeling like something just like woke me up and my water broke. So I, and before that I was like, am I going to know what it feels like? I don't know if I'm going to know. Oh, it was very obvious. <laughs> like I was like, okay, that's very obvious. Water broke. It was a super obvious feeling. We were sleeping, it was 5.55. I looked at the clock, it was 5.55 in the morning. And I just knew, I was like, oh my God. So I woke Casey up, I was like, babe, my water just broke. And he was like, what? Oh my God. It was perfect timing because it was July 25th when this happened and it was like the sun was starting to come up and it was like, okay, this is good timing. So I went to the bathroom, sat on the toilet because I was like, it was still, water was still coming out of me. I was like, ah, liquid was still coming out of me. And I was like, I don't know what to do. So I'm going to sit on the toilet and we'll go from there. Kind of, we'll just see because I was going to wait to see how things progressed before contacting the midwife place. Like if it was just going to be like a long early labor, then I was going to chill for a while, which was like, I was kind of expecting to be at home for a while, just kind of chilling. Sat down on the toilet, chilled for a minute on the toilet and got up and looked in and noticed there was like green liquid in the toilet. And I was like, oh shit. I couldn't remember if that was really bad or just something that I needed to like that let them know about. I forgot what it meant and I was like panicking. I was like, oh my God, is this bad? I freaked out. So I called the midwife place. I talked to somebody and they were like, 
we want you to come in everything should be fine that just means that your baby especially because he's a week late already like pooped inside of you which is kind of gross but whatever the whole thing is kind of weird and gross and trippy so it was just kind of like whatever he was a week late so it was normal that he had like pooped inside of me that's so gross to say out loud but just to make sure everything was okay they wanted me to head into the birth center which is what I wasn't planning on doing I was gonna wait until it was like okay I am giving birth I wanted to stay at home for a while and just kind of relax and get through that early labor and so packed everything up we had everything all ready to go especially because we were a week late and headed to the birth center which is literally a three minute drive which is so nice got there the midwives were there and they just wanted to do some testing so got there hooked me up to some machines just to kind of see how things were progressing and see how things were looking just to make sure that things were okay that like everything was stable and then they said they were going to send me home they're like we just want to do some stuff to make sure everything seems normal and then we're going to send you home and you can come back once things progress as i was hooked up to the little like machine thing like the little band that goes around i think monitoring the baby's heart rate and my contractions i was pain was getting so bad in my lower back like i was like oh my god i could barely talk or listen to what they were saying like i was Bye, monkey. I, like, couldn't even listen to what they were saying. I was just like, oh, my God. Only in my lower back. No pain in the front. Only my lower back. Like, I was just, like, in so much pain. And they are like, okay, that's interesting. We can see you're having contractions, and they're getting kind of strong. And it just kind of kept getting worse as I was sitting there. And they were like, okay, how long was your mom's first labor I was like mm, like four hours I think she had said it was four hours with me and they were like we're gonna keep you here I think you're gonna have this baby pretty soon and I was like oh my god really okay I thought I was assuming I was gonna be a more drawn-out process and I was gonna be at home for a while like I said and pretty soon after that like I think right after that they they like got the room all ready it's like a nice little like bedroom setup you know and they got the room like ready with like equipment and like tools and they got it all like all set up pretty quickly and I was like kind of panicking inside like I was like oh my god this is gonna happen so much sooner like am I ready to have a baby I was kind of panicking but I was like well I'd rather have it be short than be long so we're just getting into it I guess so yeah things just escalated really 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 damn quickly like it was not what I was expecting at all so yeah I had back labor if any of you have gone through that, dear God, that is horrible. A horrible experience. So pretty much no pain, zero pain in the front of my body, none. I felt no contractions in the front of my body, only in my lower back. The worst pain I could ever even imagine. It was a hundred times worse than I was preparing for. And I, I hate when people say I have a high pain tolerance, but I have a high pain tolerance. Like I'm pretty good at like, getting in my head and being like okay you're having a baby like that's what this pain is like it's okay it was unbearable no breaks no breaks in between contractions i heard oh you're gonna have a hard contraction then you'll have like a break and you can rest zero rest no rest nothing no no in between like it was constant excruciating pain like white hot poker being jabbed into my lower back and the reason this is happening is because the baby normally is facing my back so his face would be facing like my spine but the baby was flipped the other way and so the baby's head was pressing on my spine and oh it hurt so bad even just thinking about it is like it was it was horrible so baby facing the wrong way having the most intense back pain like I didn't even think I was gonna make a noise like you know when you see birth videos or whatever and the woman's like ah, or whatever they're doing that was kind of a shitty explanation but I was like moaning so loudly just to get through the super intense part of the pain like it would be like a minute a minute and a half of like excruciating pain with maybe like 30 seconds of like awful horrible pain so in that teeny little like awful horrible pain time I would try to get a breath and then just go into it and just be like oh like I it was so bad couldn't have anybody touch me couldn't have anybody talk to me so Casey was just I was we were so prepared for him to like help and be there and rub me and touch me I literally was like 
he just had to sit in a chair in the corner and he kept trying to help like give me sips of water and see if I needed food talking to me or touching me from him or the midwives which they pretty much left us alone like they left us in the room they would leave and come back and just check to see how things were going other than that like I just was completely just in the zone I could not be taken out of the zone or else the pain would be a lot worse so I was just I was just vibing just vibing in the pain zone just just getting through literally just getting through by moaning pretty loudly had my head on an exercise ball like on the bed with like one leg up and the good thing is is that I could move around there's a big room I could move around I wasn't in the hospital so I didn't have to be hooked up to IVs or anything like that like I could move around which I wasn't really moving around because that sounded horrible I just couldn't do anything except for like stay in the same position and just try to get through the pain so yeah it was absolutely horrible like just horrible it was yeah it was bad it was really bad. <laughs> it was not what I was expecting at all. And to top it all off, the baby's heart rate kept dropping, kept getting like really low, really low. Cause they had like one of those little like monitor things that they were just rubbing on my belly and testing every once in a while. And his heart rate was really low. Like it was not great. So I had to wear an oxygen mask pretty much the whole time. Like one of the carts and I had to have the mask on. Everyone else was wearing masks because of COVID, but I had to have like an oxygen mask on to try to give the baby more oxygen. So the baby's heart rate would be more stable. And they kept having me move because they were trying to see if different positions would make the baby's heart rate more stable. So they'd be like, let's try this, let's try this. And I really wanted to get in the tub. Like I was so stoked. Like before all this, I was like, I'm getting in the tub. I'm gonna have my baby in the bathtub, like a big jacuzzi style tub. Oh, I was so excited. And at one point I was like, can we, can we just maybe try it? So they filled it up and I got in there. And as soon as I was in there, they were like, you have to get out. The baby does not like it in here. Heart rate is dropping way too low. So I had to immediately get out. Plus I was just kind of like too big for the tub. Like I was, I'm tall, I'm almost 6'1", and I just didn't really fit that well in the tub. So got out, all these different positions, sitting on like a birth chair thing, and like in the bathroom, facing the back of the toilet, on the toilet, and just like trying all these different things that they were like, can you move? I was like, just tell me what to do. I cannot make decisions for myself. So they would say, okay, let's try this now, let's try this now. Hooked up to an oxygen mask, someone wheeling that, bringing the monitor, like it was pretty intense. Like it was just not what I was expecting at all, which is what you hear a lot of people say. You think it's gonna be this peaceful, amazing birth and it's just, was kind of chaotic. And at one point I heard the main lady, the main midwife that was kind of running the show say, can you call them and get them on the phone and tell them that we need an ambulance standing by. And I was like, I was like shocked inside, but also like, whatever, like just do what needs to get done so that this can be over. Like if I need to go to the hospital and they said it's just in case when the baby comes if his heart rate is still low and we need to it's just a backup like precautionary thing which made me feel comfortable the hospital's like two seconds away like it's right next door so my ambulance was waiting outside I'm literally dying from pain trying to get like a solid heart rate going for the baby and just dying I remember at one point thinking if it gets dark I had no idea what time it was I had I it could have been two hours it could have been 10 hours I had no idea how long it had been and I remember thinking if it starts to get dark I am going to the hospital and getting an epidural like I cannot do this anymore and it had only been a few hours like it was not anyway it was summertime it was the middle of summer like it wasn't gonna get dark till 10 p.m and it was like maybe 11 a.m. when I was like, I can't do this anymore. So anyway, one of the midwives was like, let me know if you feel like you need to start pushing. And like, I don't even know if I felt like I needed to start pushing. I just wanted to start pushing to get the baby out. So I just was like, I feel like I need to. And maybe I did and maybe I didn't. But then I, they were like, okay, let's start trying to see. And so then I started pushing and it was about like maybe an hour. And I just remember being like, they were like, do you want to feel the baby's head? And I was like, sure, not really. But like, if it means the baby's going to come sooner, just whatever. And I felt the baby's head and I was like, didn't really do much for me. I was just like, ah, just get the baby out. And I was like, does that mean they're, the baby's coming soon? And they were like, mm, 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 you still have a while probably. And I was just like, oh my God, I hate this. <sighs> and so I pushed for about an hour, ended up, they said the best position, they realized the best position for the baby was 
if I was on my hands and knees on the bed with one leg up by my arms at a time, by my hands at a time, like, like a runner stand, I don't know, like you're stretching, you know, like you have your arms and then one leg's up and the other one's straight back kind of, and like pushing so intensely in that position. And then, and then in between contractions, she would say, okay, you're in between a contraction, move the other leg up now. And we're going to push with that leg. I've never pushed so hard in my damn life. Like, oh man, that shit hurts so bad. I was not expecting it to hurt that bad. Like at one point I was even, she was like, okay, push, push as hard as you can. And I said out loud, it just hurts so bad. Like I had to say it out loud because it just was so excruciating. Like it was so bad, so bad. And later Casey said that he could tell how hard I was pushing because he heard like popping noises, noises in my chest. Like, I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but I for some reason know what he's talking about. That like, just pushing so hard, like it just as hard as I possibly could, which that's probably normal. Like I'm not saying that that's exclusive to my birth or because I was having back labor, but I just wanted the baby to get out of me so bad. I was pushing so hard and it hurt so bad. Everything down there hurt so bad in my back. Ugh, ugh. I was like, just get out of me. So yeah, I pushed for a while, feeling the baby's head coming out of my body was so weird. I was not expecting it to feel like that. So that was really, really weird. Really gross feeling. Like I was like, oh my God, there's a person coming out of me. I don't like that. I don't like it. I don't like it. It was really weird. Pushed, finally the baby came. The reason the baby's heart rate was dropping was because the umbilical cord was like wrapped around the baby's body. It wasn't like around the neck or anything, but like wrapped around the body. So they like untangled it. And I loved not having the baby in the hospital because they pretty much give you your baby right away. Like make sure that it, that the baby's okay, but they don't touch the bit. You are the first person that touches the baby besides the midwife that caught the baby. Then they just hand you your baby. And I just held my baby and I was so traumatized that I wasn't even like connecting. Like I was just like, eh, there's a baby in my arms. I know this is my baby. Why am I not feeling more emotion? I thought I was going to cry and feel so happy and excited. And also so shocked because it was a boy. I thought for sure, everybody thought for sure it was a girl. For sure thought it was a girl. And Casey was like, it's a boy. I was like, I'm confused. I'm traumatized. I'm confused. I now have the baby in my arms and I'm tired. And so the baby finally came at 12.38 PM. So water broke at 5.55, so pretty much 6 AM. 12.38 PM, had the baby, spent the first hour pretty much just holding him and nursing him and just being with him and Casey. And Casey got to take his mask off because the midwives left the room and just let us be with him, which was really, really cool. Still so traumatized. Like I just couldn't, I really couldn't like focus on anything except for feeling traumatized literally. And then they came in and I tore like my like labia tour. I think that's the right term. So they stitched me up, which was not fun getting like the shots in that area and then stitching up. But whatever, that was so much less painful and traumatizing than the birth. So at that point I was like, whatever, just do whatever. It's totally fine. And then literally like two hours later, I don't remember how long later, but not very long later, we went home, rested for a little bit more, got in the car, came home and slept. All three of us just slept. He slept next to me and it just was beautiful. That part was so nice, just sleeping and cuddling. Oh, it was so nice. But yeah, so we were pretty much like home by like, I don't remember, like 4 p.m. I think it was. Very short time being there, which I also loved. I'm so glad I didn't have to like stay in the hospital and just be there and stay the night or whatever. I'm so glad I just got to come home and be in my bed and just be with my baby. And it was nighttime, so it was perfect. It's exactly what I wanted. So yeah. That's my birth experience. That's my birth story. That is how everything happened. I could have gone into a lot more detail, but this video is already like gonna be super long and I just didn't wanna ramble about how much pain I was in for a long time <laughs> because I could have gone on and on about different positions and the pain and the pain and the pain and the pain and the pain. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how he came. He's amazing. He's six months old, almost six months old and he's just, He's getting to that age where he's like funny and laughing and engaging and he can hang out on his own for a little bit. So it's awesome. He's the best. Okay, I'm gonna shut up now, but that's my birth story. That's how it all went down. 
if you have any questions and want to know more let me know in the comments and i will answer as many questions as i get and be excited for more content i will definitely be making videos about mom stuff we're cloth diapering we're doing ec elimination communication aka ec and what i eat in a day while i'm breastfeeding what's heat what he's eating and all that kind of stuff so make sure you're subscribed if you're not subscribed and hit the little like button if you liked listening to me talk about my birth story thank you so much for listening slash watching and yeah i'll just see you guys next time wow it's really hard to start filming a video when you haven't filmed one in okay i don't know how many months but it's been a long time okay restarting restarting uh i can't do it hi everybody uh not the oh my god i'm gonna kill my cat monkey i'm nervous to start what is up this is kind of awkward it's been so long since i filmed a video hello oh my god filming a video right now feels so incredibly awkward